Landing family and welcome to Lexus update. This isn't going to be like a full full update but I'm going to talk about his IP. I did a live stream about this but I decided to do a recorded video so I can cover all the points that I want to cover. For those who are just joining like who is Lex? Lex is my amazing almost six-year-old son. He just started kindergarten this year. He is diagnosed with ADHD and autism. We are trying to mainstream him as much as we can. Before the IEP meeting I want to kind of share like what they were doing. I feel these kind of um, videos are really helpful for anyone that's in the school system and working with other special kiddos. So basically the school here until they could do all of the testing, they did so much testing on him. Um, they had to follow Florida's IEP because IEP uh, stands for Individualized Educational Plan. It is a legal document though. So until they had an updated one, they had to follow the Florida one. But the Florida one was kind of whack if I'm being honest. They said it, not me. So it was a little bit weird. They did have a like a a one-on-one -on -one aid for him that was by him constantly but like they couldn't call it a one-on-one -on -one aid because his IEP in Florida didn't have one-on-one -on -one aid he only had speech on there and that was that now this IEP meeting was amazing I'm sharing this for anyone that facilitates IEP meetings right now I think that this was such an amazing way to start it off as IEP meetings usually are not super positive they actually had everyone go around the room and say something positive about Lex, something that they loved. And I felt like that just started the IEP meeting off in just such positive energy. And for our case, we got lots of good news, but for most IEP meetings, you aren't getting good news. You're having to go over scores that usually aren't super high. So basically, so I don't talk forever, they are dropping him from special education. Lex is doing amazing in school. Lex is just doing amazing. He right now um, gets out of school. Um, at 1 at 12 45 and then he does a few hours of ABA when he gets home so basically the few hours he's missing from school is being supplemented with ABA for at-home behaviors we will get into that but he's doing really good at school they're not having to take him out of the classroom he is needing redirection and obviously some assistance in that standpoint but he doesn't qualify for special education. Like there's no need for him to have it. Um, they do still have the option that if his behaviors do arise and he needs some time in the sensory room or to calm down or collect himself, they still have that option there for him, but it's not enough. It's not happening. Lex is doing amazing. He will still receive all of those accommodations as he needs them. He does still have what is <laughs> now considered a one-on-one -on -one aid. They're trying to pull back to see how much he needs. Like they don't want to pull back too much where he doesn't have that support, but they also want to make sure that he's pushing himself and he's not relying on someone else all day long. They all agree that they think that most likely he will end up on a 504 plan in the future. Not right now or anything. Obviously he still needs some supports there and he'll always be on a 504 plan because of his heart. So there, there's no way around that. So 504 plan is the best we are going to get. So it was really exciting to hear that. I've never had a child where them not having an IEP was an option and a good option. Obviously, we want the IEP there for him if he needs it. So Lex is what is considered twice exceptional. Twice exceptional basically means that they are gifted, but that that usually they have another disability that overshadows it where sometimes you're on aren't able to see it, if that makes sense. So they are testing Lex for the gifted program. Why are they testing Lex for the gifted program? Well, because they tested my son and my son who just, literally just started kindergarten. I'm filming this in October, but we had this IEP meeting in September. So this was the beginning of his kindergarten school year and he tested almost a second grade level in everything. And that's pretty amazing because he does have ADHD and he's very distractible. So they're like, this isn't even what he can really do because it is standardized and we do have to go by what is being shown. And I get asked a lot, like, will they change his grade and we absolutely will not. He's not ready for a second grade classroom at all. That was pretty crazy. And I always knew Lex was ahead. I always knew he was from the very get go. I just didn't realize how ahead he was. I thought he was going to test closer to a first grade level, um, like the beginning of a first grade level. He can read in full paragraphs. Like he literally started reading sight words near the end of summer. And then now he reads in paragraphs. No one really taught him to read. He just reads. I I don't, 
I don't even know, which is a little bit of a problem. I've never had a child do this before, so I have to be very careful. Like when he's hanging out with me and I'm talking to my best friend, Melissa, like obviously you don't want your five-year-old reading your conversations with your best friend, right? So I have to definitely make sure that when he's around that anything that he can read is appropriate for him. So it's definitely a little bit different. Right now he has his IEP under other medical conditions. We will have to redo it in three years and that's when we will kind of decide is it more appropriate for him to have a 504 plan. They did do like um, autism testing on him like on the school level and he does not qualify for an educational autism diagnosis on his IEP. And that's not surprising. We were expecting that. So basically he's going to be receiving OT and speech and school once a week. So since he started school, eating has improved. He eats great at school because he does really good at watching his environment and doing what they're doing. He has gained four pounds in the last year, two to three pounds in the last like three or four months. He was doing better at eating even before he started school and now he's just doing amazing. He only has like one pediatrician shake a day just to kind of um, offset any vitamins that he isn't getting through food because he still is picky but he's just eating um, more quantities of it now. Private therapy he is down to OT, PT, and speech all once a week. I suspect that in next year or so he probably won't be in most of them. He's doing so amazing that he no longer qualifies for CNA hours either. So we are very, very proud parents. After I left the IEP meeting, I was just crying. Like I was so happy just how well that he has progressed since we've moved here. ABA has also decreased his hours as well. And our goal is by the end of this school year for him to be in school full time, like for the entire day and not be in ABA anymore. But we will just kind of see where it goes. We are obviously still working on safety issues. That's basically all we're working on at this point is just making sure that he's staying safe. They basically just work on whatever speech and OT is working on. All right, so my battery died before, so we're we're gonna answer some quick questions that you guys asked on Instagram. But before doing that, I wanted to talk about eloping as I know that's a common question. Like, is he still eloping? Is that a problem we're having? We're actually not really having that problem anymore. We are having some car safety issues, but overall we aren't having the eloping issue. We're still keeping all the safety things in, in place just because we have Liam and Nelly. Don't wanna test that one out. Let's go to the questions. Crafty Angel Mom asked, do you ever have an issue with them not following the IEP? That is not something we have to worry about in this district now. Keep in mind, Lex has only been in school for two and a half months. So, I mean, it could change in the future, but where he's at right now is amazing and we have no issues whatsoever with that. Jennifer asked, does Lex's ADHD affect him in school? Why, yes, yes it does. A hundred percent, definitely. Uh, Night Roller asked, why does he have a 504 for his heart? Can he get accommodations? No, like PE. Um, for right now, it's fine. For right now, we are in the early stages of it. I will link his video before below about his heart for those who are like, what are you talking about? Right now, we don't have to worry about it. The cardiologist told us that he can live, he can live a perfectly normal life. But as it progresses, then that is something that we do have to consider too. Leanne asked how his heart is. We won't know any update on his heart until he gets another echo in, I think it's like January of 2023. So it's gonna be a little bit as far as his fatigue and lethargic spells, he's not having them more often. So for right now, we're going to assume everything steady. Is he mainstream or like a special ed part of school? Yes, he's mainstream. He's in the class with all the other kids. He only gets taken out for specials, speech therapy, OT, things like that. But overall, that is it. He is what is considered mainstreamed. The district here where we live in Colorado is very, very inclusive. So they only do like a self-contained classroom if that's just absolutely necessary. And they almost always try to do inclusive first. So this is a question and I am not going to answer potty training questions. I've said this so many times, but people still ask. They still ask. How did he enter kindergarten if he wasn't fully potty trained or didn't say when he needed to go? So I'm not discussing Lux and his potting habits, not appropriate, 
But a school district cannot keep your child from going to school just because they are not potty trained. That is one of the accommodations that they have to make. And Beast Wits asks, how will they still be able to make sure he doesn't elope? He always has someone by him. Lex is never alone, <laughs> like ever. Our school actually does not give homework. There was a question about homework. Um, like even our teenagers don't have homework unless there's like a special project or something like that. But overall they don't have homework, which I think is amazing. I think it's kind of ridiculous to send a kid to school all day and then send them home with work too. As someone that homeschooled and all of my kids got their schoolwork done in just a few hours, I think eight to 10 hours a day of schoolwork is just ridiculous. And that's just my opinion. Another question is what makes him think he will not need an IEP 504 one day? It's just an assumption off of where he's at right now. So right now they are slowly pulling back some of his supports to see if he needs them or if he doesn't and overall he's just doing very well of course no one can predict the future when doctors or professionals or educational personnel give out oh this is where we think they will be at or this is what we're seeing it is just based off of that day that moment in time things can change for the better or for the worse so so the last question is has he made any friends in his class? Yes, he's actually made a lot of friends, a lot of friends. So it's nice to see him being social. He does really well with just copying his, his environment, just like watching what other kids are doing and then doing that. But I hope this answered everyone's questions. We are doing the last Halloween drinking stream either tonight or tomorrow night, depending on when this is going up. I don't know when this is going up, but it's gonna be Friday night around 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm dressing up, I'm dressing up and we're just gonna have a good time, have some drinks, hang out. So if you wanna hang out, um, go to younow.com forward slash our landing crew. It's free to sign up. And I am streaming on there basically every night again. I'm starting to get into the swing of things. Next week, I will actually have a video that is going to explain more of what's going on, which is kind of crazy. But thank you guys for coming along with this journey that has been 2021. And we'll see you guys later. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in